Spiders are the subject of more household myths and old wives' tales than perhaps any other animals on Earth. Australian spiders in particular bear the full brunt of misinformation, propagated by a less than optimal combination of sensationalist or even blatantly misleading media, and the spreading of ludicrous personal anecdotes such as those involving funnel-web spiders chasing people, or huntsmen getting as big as dinner plates. No matter the species, it seems being the subject of ill-informed fear-mongering is a given. But when it comes to myths and misconceptions, there is one spider in Australia that stands above all the rest. Here I am, accompanied by one of the most maligned spiders in Australia, and indeed the world. Lampona, the infamous white-tailed spider. It is the subject of so many terrifying tales, and today I shall be putting them to the test because I will be getting bitten by this spider right here. The genus Lampona is fairly widespread in Australia, especially on the east coast. While I myself have only come across two wild individuals in almost 20 years, Further south, it seems that encounters with these spiders can be pretty commonplace. They spend the daylight hours sheltering in various nooks and crannies, such as beneath loose pieces of bark, and emerge at night to hunt. Unlike many spiders, Lampona are far from being sit-and-wait predators. Rather, they are active hunters, prowling through the undergrowth beneath the cover of darkness, seeking out their next meal. Lampona are specialist spider hunters, and perhaps their most regular targets are the house spiders from the genus Badamna, which are a frequent sight in both urban settings and out in the bush. So there's certainly cause for other spiders to fear the whitetail, but why do we humans live in terror of such creatures? Well, that can be chalked down to the extremely widespread belief that Lampona bites can frequently cause necrotic wounds that may eventually lead to amputation or even death. This notion is extremely pervasive. At times, it seems everyone in Australia has at least one friend or family member who was supposedly bitten by one of these spiders, often with gruesome results. But if years of working with spiders has taught me anything, it's that even the most notorious fall far short of their reputations. And in the case of the whitetail, there is currently no credible evidence whatsoever of the horrific flesh-rotting bites that have garnered them such notoriety. Studies of the venom have uncovered insufficient evidence of the potential for any such symptoms to occur. It was found to have little effect on cultured human cells, and lacked the cytotoxic compounds present in the venom of Loxosceles, a genus of spider that does have the potential to inflict necrotic bites. Furthermore, a prospective study of 130 confirmed bites by two species of whitetail, Lampona murina and Lampona cylindrata, in which the spiders were caught in the act and subsequently identified by an expert, thus leaving little room for doubt that the culprit was indeed a whitetail, found zero instances of necrosis, with most bites causing only mild local effects such as pain and swelling. And now comes the moment you've all been waiting for, the bite. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to go about doing this. Of course, I've done spider bites before, but they've been with much bigger spiders, which are generally a good deal easier to work with. So this could be a bit of a challenge, but we can only try. It's times like this when I wish that white tails were even a little bit near as aggressive as people say they are, because this, this is not aggressive. Oh! 
couple of went for me, but that was a dry... I think that was a dry bite. I certainly don't feel anything. Well, I felt the fangs go in, but that's about it. No bite. Maybe I'll just use my fingers. Come on. I got, mate, I got you pinned right down in a very awkward position. No bite, still. I do actually see a bit of swelling where that first bite was. You gonna bite or what? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, mate, you can, you can let go now. Proud of you. I'm proud of you. Ah, 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 ah. So there we have it, um, somewhere here. A, that's a definite bite, and that one as well. So two white-tailed spider bites. Currently, they feel like practically nothing. It's basically a very mild itch, if that. But of course, we'll see how it develops and I shall keep you updated. So a couple minutes later, there is a slight elevated area at both bite sites and they're both mildly itching. Roughly half an hour after the bite, the swelling was already beginning to ease and they would only itch if I actually touched them. By the time I got home, which was about an hour later, the entire thing was pretty much unnoticeable. All in all, the white tail bite was like Jurassic World Dominion, in that I came into it with low expectations and it somehow fell short even of that. Perhaps it may develop over the coming hours, but as I speak right now, all signs and symptoms of both bites have faded away. Obviously not every bite is going to be the same, and Lampona bites can cause moderate pain and occasional systemic effects as well, but I doubt my arm will be falling off anytime soon. So if Lampona are this benign, why are the stories of necrotic bites so prevalent? In the aforementioned study, the criteria for something to qualify as a confirmed bite were pretty stringent. See the spider, catch the spider, and get it expertly identified. And these requirements were wholly justified as well. For misdiagnosis of unrelated wounds and infections as spider bites was and remains extremely common. Even to this day, doctors have been known to blame whitetails for mysterious wounds. One instance, which gained significant publicity, involved a Filipino tourist who had to have both his legs amputated due to an apparent white-tailed spider bite except no bite, let alone spider, was observed. It was baselessly diagnosed as a white tail bite and sensationalist media headlines ran with it. The tendency to blame white tails or any other spider for unknown wounds in the absence of clear evidence 
is not only erroneous, but potentially dangerous. If a hazardous infection is mislabeled as a spider bite, it may not be properly treated for what it is, thus exacerbating the issue. As someone who has long held a soft spot for the unloved majority of the animal kingdom, combating the widespread fear-mongering aimed at the creatures I'm most passionate about can seem like a daunting task. Ignorance leaves you vulnerable to being misinformed, to fear things you don't need to fear. But if my own experience is any indication, education consistently triumphs over superstition. Let the white-tailed spider be a cautionary example of just how easily myths can take hold, just how easily they can be spread, and how even a little education can reveal a benign creature held hostage behind a monstrous reputation. If you found this video interesting, feel free to check out my last spider bite, this time from one of the biggest huntsmen in Australia. And if you enjoy my content, then feel free to subscribe as well. Thank you all very much for watching, and I shall see you again very soon.